Do you know who Smedley Butler was? If not, you definitely should. Smedley Butler was a two-star general in the Marine Corps. He's one of only two Marines in history to earn the Medal of Honor twice, and at the time of his death, he was the most decorated Marine in US history. He was also a socialist and an avowed anti-imperialist. Smedley Butler joined the military during the Spanish-American War, which is considered the US's first war of foreign expansion and the birth of its global empire. At the time, the Spanish Empire controlled Cuba, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines, but the Spanish Empire was also weakening. The United States, on the other hand, was a growing power and saw this as an opportunity to dethrone the Spanish Empire and become a global power itself. No different than the wars today, the United States disguised its imperialist motives by saying that they were fighting the war for humanitarian reasons, to save the poor Cuban people from the brutal Spanish Empire. The media also played the exact same role that it does today as a cheerleader for the war, writing sensational war propaganda about the brutality of the Spanish and how the US had to intervene to save the Cubans, a practice that got its own nickname, Yellow Journalism. Like so many young men who were eager to do good in the world, Butler got caught up in this war propaganda and enlisted in the Marine Corps at the age of 16, lying about his age to get in. He wrote later, recounting his feelings when he decided to enlist, I clenched my fist when I thought of those poor Cuban devils being starved and murdered by the beastly Spanish tyrants. Butler was deployed to Cuba in July of 1898, and for the next 20 years, Butler was sent on one imperialist expedition after another, clearing the way for US corporations with a hail of bullets. After Cuba, Butler was deployed to the Philippines, Honduras, Haiti, Nicaragua, Panama, Mexico, and even as far as China. Butler was regarded as a highly disciplined Marine and rose quickly through the ranks as an officer. But over time, he started to realize more and more that he and his fellow Marines were being used to do grunt work for big business, not to spread freedom and democracy like they thought they would when they enlisted. Well, he was in Nicaragua, where the US military would back a right-wing pro-business government friendly to US corporations, Butler wrote in a letter home, what makes me mad is that this whole revolution is inspired and financed by Americans who have wildcat investments down here and want to make them good by putting in a government which will declare a monopoly in their favor. By the time Butler retired in 1931, he had won more ribbons and medals than any Marine in US history up until that point, but after all of that, his sole conclusion was that all of the wars he fought were just big money-making schemes for corporate America. In an article he wrote for the socialist magazine Common Sense, he said, quote, I spent 33 years and four months in active military service, and during that period, I spent most of my time as a high-class muscle man for big business, for Wall Street, and the bankers. In short, I was a racketeer, a gangster for capitalism. I helped make Mexico, and especially Tampico, safe for American oil interests in 1914. I helped make Haiti and Cuba a decent place for the National City Bank boys to collect revenues in. I helped in the raping of half a dozen Central American republics for the benefit of Wall Street. I helped purify Nicaragua for the International Banking House of Brown Brothers in 1902 to 1912. I brought light to the Dominican Republic for the American sugar interests in 1916. I helped make Honduras right for the American fruit companies in 1903. In China in 1927, I helped to see that Standard Oil went on its way unmolested. Looking back on it, I might have given Al Capone a few hints. The best he could do was operate his racket in three districts. I operated on three continents. He summarized his thoughts on war in a book called War is a Racket, in which he explains that all war is simply a racket, a money-making scheme for a small group of elites. Here's how the book opens. War is a racket. It always has been. It's possibly the oldest, easily the most profitable, surely the most vicious. It's the only one international in scope. It's the only one in which the profits are reckoned in dollars and the losses in lives. In World War I, a mere handful garnered the profits of the conflict. At least 21,000 new millionaires and billionaires were made in the United States during the World War. That many admitted their huge blood gains in their income tax returns. How many other war millionaires falsified their income tax returns, no one knows. How many of these millionaires shouldered a rifle? How many of them dug a trench? How many of them spent sleepless, frightened nights ducking shells and shrapnel and machine gun bullets? How many of them were wounded or killed in battle? 
Butler was hugely popular with veterans, not only because of his rank and reputation, but because he advocated for them. In 1932, at the height of the Great Depression, Butler helped lead the Bonus March, a massive march of World War I veterans and their families who marched on Congress to demand bonus pay that they had been promised for fighting in World War I, but never received. Butler gave speeches telling the veterans that they had as much of a right to lobby Congress as anyone else. But instead of paying the soldiers, the march encampment was broken up with cavalry charges and tear gas. The bonus march demonstrated the power that veterans could wield when organized. Big business interests took notice of this power and Butler's influence with veterans, and in 1934, Butler claims he was approached by a businessman named Gerald P. McGuire, who said that a group of businessmen, backed by 500,000 soldiers and $3 million from J.P. Morgan Bank, were planning to overthrow President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and said that they wanted Butler to lead the plot and become America's fascist dictator. Butler refused and instead testified to Congress about the plot. After hearing Butler's testimony, the committee said, quote, there was no question that these attempts were discussed, were planned, and might have been placed in execution, and that, quote, the committee was able to verify all the pertinent statements made by General Butler. Nonetheless, there was no further investigation in the matter, and the media dismissed it as a hoax. Butler would spend the rest of his life speaking out against war profiteering until his death in 1940. Even though he was one of the most decorated and widely respected Marines in US history, I'm willing to bet that most of the people you know, and probably a lot of you watching this, have never even heard of him. And it's obvious why. All of the soldiers that are elevated as war heroes in our culture all have one thing in common. They obediently follow their orders and carry them out without question. They never question the motives of the war, they never speak out, and therefore, they never threaten the politicians and the war profiteers. It's like the war profiteers put a model of the exact kind of soldier they want in all of our movies and TV shows. And that's why you never hear about soldiers like Smedley Butler, and why they try to smear Aaron Bushnell. There's a long history of soldiers engaging in mutiny and revolt that they hide from us because a lot of times, these revolts become a catalyst for revolution. The fundamental lie that all wars are built on is this idea that some guy far away, someone you've never met halfway across the world, is somehow your enemy, and not the millionaire politicians and their billionaire owners sending you to die. Our enemy isn't in some far off land speaking foreign languages and hiding in caves. Our enemy's right here. It's all these politicians who foam at the mouth to send our children to war, and all the CEOs who make money off them dying. War has always been a racket. The ruling class knows this better than anyone because they're the ones that benefit. And they fear the military waking up to this because the day that happens is the day the guns turn around.